Okay, guys, now for 2.7, I want to combine some transformations, okay? So I'm going to grab the following and I'm going to label three points. And I'm going to show you how I go through and I do this. If you have a way you like to do better, then that's fine. But generally, I like to track points. So what I'm going to do is I see the function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out what base function that reminds me of. And that reminds me of absolute value x. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll do the base function here, okay? And I'll do that in red since it's already in red. And I will track these points. I will track 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. Okay, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to transform him, okay? So to start getting to this next one, what I want to do with these transformations is I want to start with the base function and work my way out, okay? So the first thing I notice is I could get three times B of X, and that's three times the absolute value of X. Notice I'm not quite to F of X, but I'm getting there. So I'm just working my way out. And I got to ask myself, well, what is that doing? What is that three doing? Well, that's taking all of the Y values, the old values we got from the absolute value x and multiplying them by three. If you remember, this is one of those vertical stretches. So what I'm gonna write down here is, I'm gonna say, okay, vertical uh, stretch. Uh, I guess I'll say times three. Or you could say multiply all the y values by three. So I guess what I'll do is I'll do this one in a dashed line. It doesn't change the beginning, but it takes all the y values and multiplies them by three. So now this is the point one, three. This is the point negative one, three. So I'll do this one in my dashed line. So notice how I've done the stretch. This right here is the graph of three times that base function I did in the dashed line. Now, I still have a negative there. So if I do negative three times B of X, that'll be negative three absolute value X. That's what I want. That's equal to this f of x, which I am going to do in blue, okay? And what does that do from the last one? This, if you remember, if the negative is in front of the whole function, the whole previous function, that's going to flip over the x-axis, right? It takes all the y's and makes them negatives of what they just were. So 0, 0, well, that remains unaffected. But negative 1, 3, like we said, we're going to flip the y value. This is negative 1, negative 3. See how I'm just literally changing the y values. 1, 3 is going to change to 1, negative 3. Okay, so I just do this step by step. And now this right here is f of x, this blue one. Okay. So that's how I like to generally go through this. If you're not sure at the end, plug a few points in, make sure they satisfy. Let's go to B, G of X equals absolute value of X plus three plus two, okay? So once again, the base function this makes me think of is absolute value of X. I'll go through, I will go ahead and graph that just to get going. So here's your base function here. We got zero, zero. We got 1, 1, and we got negative 1, 1. And what I'm going to do, the question is, okay, do I do the vertical part first or the horizontal? Technically, with just these types of transformations, it doesn't matter. But what I want you to get in the habit of is always starting in and working your way out, okay? Because things that are happening out here, this plus 2, that doesn't affect what's happening inside. So that's why we start in and we work out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do B of x plus 3. And ask yourself if you know where I'm getting that. What would that be if I take an x plus 3 and I replace the x in here? That would be the absolute value of x plus 3, which isn't the full g of x, but we're getting closer. And I'll do that in a dashed red line. Okay. And what is that? That's going to be a shift right by 3. Remember, that's that counterintuitive one. So I'm going to take all the points and I'm going to say, okay, well now I'm to 3, 0. 1, 1 is going to go to 4, 1. And I just did that in the wrong direction, didn't I? 
it's the counterintuitive one. So it's not shift right, it's shift left. Right, plus three, shift left. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so zero, zero is now at negative three, zero. That's right here. Negative one, one is now at negative four, one. And the one, one is now at the, I guess I'll just put it in right there. That's going to be negative two, one. Everything shifted over by three. So we've shifted to the left by three. All right, now let's go down once more. I think I'm ready to do my final one, b of x plus three, that's absolute value of x plus three, plus two. That should give me what I want. That's gonna be g of x, okay? So what is that gonna do? <clears throat> well, what that's gonna do is it's, this is the one that is intuitive. It's going to shift up two. We're gonna add two to each y value. So negative three zero is now going to be negative three two right here. Negative two one is now going to be negative two three. Okay, negative two three. And negative four one is now going to be negative four three. So here is the graph that we want. Here's our g of x. Okay. Let's try a few more. What I'll probably do is I'll do C and then I'll do D on the next one. Okay, so here H of X equals negative X plus one cubed. Base function to start off with. Well, I'm familiar with this one, X cubed. That's what this reminds me of. So I'll go ahead and I'll graph that. Okay, I'm going to refrain from labeling the points just because I don't want it to get too messy, but essentially, this is your base function, okay? We got zero, zero, one, one, negative one, negative one. Now I'm gonna ask myself, okay, how do I work my way out? Do I do the thing inside or outside first? I do the thing inside. So I need to do a B of X plus one, which is X plus one cubed. I know that's the counterintuitive shift, so I'm going to shift left by one. So now I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here, left, 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 okay? Um, and I'll do that in a dash. Okay, so that's the dashed part right there, okay? Now, I'm gonna say, okay, well, what does that negative out in front of the whole function do? It's a flip, is it a flip over the X or the Y? Well, if it's in front of the whole function, that's a reflection about the Y. Or, or sorry, the X. <laughs> so um, what we get here is we get negative B, negative B of X plus one equals negative X plus one cubed. And that is exactly the H of X that we wanna graph, okay? What this is, is this is a reflect over X axis. Okay. So essentially you reflect over the x-axis, it's going to change the sign of all the y's. So instead of being at 0, 1, we're going to be at 0, negative 1. And instead of being at negative 1, 0, well, a reflect over the x gives you the same point, negative 1, 0. And instead of being at negative 2, negative 1, we're going to be at negative 2, 1, the reflect over the x-axis, negative 2, 1. And we know generally how this thing goes, right? So this is going to go like this. This will go down like this. This right here will be your graph of h of x, okay? We got one more video coming.